Hello and welcome to another coding project. Unfortunately, again, this is another recorded class as opposed to a live broadcast class. Uh, we'll hopefully be back to the broadcast, the live classes next Wednesday. So let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. Today, we're gonna to make the classic Chrome Dino Jump game. So we can see a little example of it here. I'm sure you're all familiar with the game. It, it plays on Chrome when you're not connected to the internet. And basically you've got a dino running along and Every now and again, you'll see some cactuses that the dino needs to jump over. We're going to try and remake this game in arcade. So if I fly down here, so this is going to be our version of it. So we're going to try and remake this classic game in arcade. So let's get to it. So as usual, um, or as like it was last week, this is a recorded lesson. So I'm going to demonstrate the steps. So, and if you want to pause it after each step, go ahead and do the step and then, and then pl press play on the video. So you should see the video up here. Uh, you can go to full screen, watch a step, uh, press pause, come out of full screen, go do the step, press play, see the next step and so on. And we'll work our way through it. We should hopefully be back to our live classes next Wednesday. So hopefully this is the last uh, recorded class that we need to do. Okay, so let's get started. So this is an arcade lesson. So this is the third one we've done in these, in these recent batch of live lessons, third arcade project. So step number one is just to open up the arcade.makecode.com website. So click on the link in step number one and then click on new project, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine Dino Jump. So it's something that makes sense, you know, so when you go back in, if you wanna open up the project, you can spot which one it is by the name. And let me mark that step as done and move on to step number two. Okay, so we're gonna to need to draw the tile map, draw the map for our game. And because this is a big, long map, we're gonna to have to change the width and the height of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the background color to be a kind of blue color for the background sky, and then we're gonna draw in our tile map. But we're gonna set the width to be 100 and the height to be eight. So width 100 and height uh, to be eight, and that should give us a big long map. So if you zoom in here, we're going to change the width and height down the bottom left here. And then we're going to draw in um, our, our ground tiles all the way along the bottom. So draw them in all the way along the bottom like so. And we're going to put also just some tiles at the end where our dino needs to kind of reach some kind of goal tiles. Um, okay, um, so let's get going with this. So I'm going to switch across to Going to switch to arcade and inside the on start i'm going to put set background color 2 from the scene toolbox and let me choose a kind of sky blue for there and then into scene again and i'm going to go down to the tile maps heading and get set tile map 2 tile map and it has a gray box i can click which will open up the tile map editor. So again, we're gonna change the dimensions of our, of our map. So we want to change them down the bottom. At the moment, they're 16 by 16. So we're gonna change it to 100. So that's 100 width by eight in height, like so. And as we can see, we have a nice, long, elongated map that we can run through. And then I'm going to choose this tile. You can choose whatever tile you want for the ground. But I think this one kind of works well because it's like earth and then it's got a little bit of grass at the top. And what I'm going to do is just draw that all the way along. Just a flat platform all the way along. And then choose some other tile. Let me get rid of my head that will just kind of put in at the end and what you want to do is m put the full side of it as as that tile because you might be jumping into it and um, so if you were only to put it at the bottom you might jump over it and miss it so you know that's why we'll put it all the way at the end like that and then click on done and come back and mark this step as done oh we need to make the ground tiles uh, we need to set them to be walls and we've done this in previous projects so i'm going to go back in to my arcade uh, tab open up the tile map editor i'm going to select the wall tool which is this 3d wall icon here i'm going to click on that and this kind of gives me this pink little um, uh, square that i can click on all the tiles that I want to be set as walls. So what that does, it means that any sprites um, will not pass through them because they'll act as a wall. Um, so I'm gonna set them like all the way across like that, set them to be walls and click on done. 
And now that's step number two as done. What did I get? I got a brain. And we'll move on to step number three. So again, if you're watching the video and you're coding along, just pause after each step and go ahead and you go and do it and then come back and then press play. In step number three, we're gonna create our dino sprite. And we're gonna add in some code just to kind of set up the dino sprite. So first of all, let's have a little zoom in here and see what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, bring in the block set my sprite to sprite of kind player. And then we're gonna go in and design our little dinosaur. Then we're going to set the AY, which is the acceleration on the Y axis, which is up and down to be 400. And that will kind of pull the, the sprite down like gravity. And then we're going to set the VX, which is the velocity on the X axis, which is left and right to be 100. So that will actually just make the dyno automatically start moving uh, through the map like that. And then what we're also going to do is put in camera follow sprite my sprite. So as the dyno is running through the map, the camera is going to go. As the dyno is running through the map, the camera is going to go all the way through. Um, so like that. OK, so let's add in these uh, blocks. So I'm going to switch across to my um, arcade tab. I'll go into the sprites toolbox and get the first block in there. Set my sprite to sprite of kind player and click on the gray box and we can go in and design our dyno. So I'm gonna choose the pencil tool and a green color because I'm gonna go for a green dyno. And really, I'm just gonna try and draw something like this, like a looking, uh, looking kind of side on to a dinosaur. So let me just kind of draw the head and down into the tail like that. Okay, there's my head. Let me have a look at how I did it here. Okay, we'll do a bit of a body, a bit more of a tail, and then we'll do the legs. Nothing, nothing too elaborate. Fill it in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a kind of space for the eye of the dino, something like that. Oh, we'll do some little pterodactyl, or not pterodactyl, uh, T-Rex little dinosaur arms at, at the front. Okay, this effort isn't as good as the effort in the lesson, but I'm sure your effort uh, will be better than mine. But I'm going to go with this. Kind of looks a little bit more like a parrot than a dinosaur, but maybe it'll be a, a parrot jump instead of dino jump. So once I finish, or once the, uh, the little simulator, arcade simulator, reloads, you're going to see your... Uh, your sprite there in the middle of the screen. Now we need to set a couple of things. So we're going to say set my sprite AY, so the acceleration Y to be 400. So let's go and do that. So we're going to sprites and there should be a set my sprite X to zero. Now we can change this so you can see the little white arrow there. That means we can change different properties of the my sprite. So I'm going to bring in this block and click on the little white arrow and get the AY, acceleration Y. And what did we say? We're gonna set that to be 400. So 400. And when I reload, or when the uh, little simulator reloads, you'll see that when it loads, the, the AY, uh, the acceleration Y that we've set for the sprite just pulls it down. If we were to put that into a minus figure, it'd actually make it go up. So watch this, I'll put it into a minus figure. This will make it go up, Woo, floating up. But we want to make it go down like gravity. So we'll put in 400. Okay, the next thing I want to do is set the VX, the velocity X, so moving left and, uh, left and right. If we put in a positive number into there, it'll move it towards the, towards the right. And if we put in a negative number, it'll move it towards the left. So we're going to put in 100 to move it towards the right. So again, we're going to go into the sprites toolbox, get the same block, set my sprite X to zero. Click on the little white arrow and we'll get the VX and we're going to change that to be 100. So you'll see straight away your dinosaur starts moving across. Um, if I was to put that to be minus 50, you'll see that the dinosaur will move to the left hand side this time. But we want to move it to the right, so we'll leave it at 100. And because our dinosaur is moving off the screen, we need to say camera follow sprite my sprite. So that is in the scene toolbox. And we go down to the camera heading and camera follow sprite, my sprite. Inside the on start, again, on start is what uh, we use for the, you know, to set up the start of the game. And we can see the dinosaur moving 
through the map. So uh, like that. Okay, so I'm going to mark step number three as done. Get my reward and move on to step number four. Okay, so step number four, we're going to make our dinosaur jump by programming the A button. So the A button is this one here on the little simulator, or it actually hooks up to your space, space bar on your keyboard. So you see I'm pressing my space bar and you can see the A button activating there. So what are we going to say? We're going to say on A button pressed. So when you press the A button or the space bar on your keyboard, we're going to say if my sprite is hitting the wall bottom. So basically if your sprite is on the ground, then we're going to play a sound for jumping up. And then we're going to set the velocity Y to minus 200, which will make it go up. But the acceleration Y that we set to 400 will eventually pull that back down. So it'll just jump up and then pull down. But you're, you will only be able to jump while you're touching the ground. So you can't double jump. Okay, so let's add in the code. So we're going to go into the controller toolbox and get on A button pressed. Yeah, let's switch these around so I have a little bit of clear space. So on A button press from the controller toolbox and then we're going to go into logic and get an if true then. So we're going to test if something is true or false. And what are we going to test? We're going to test if the sprite is hitting the wall bottom. So I think that is in scene and we go down to uh, the locations heading and in there, there there's a block that says is my sprite hitting wall left and we can see we can change left to be different things we're going to drag that in and put it in between if and then so now it says and we're also going to change it so click the little white arrow and change it to be bottom so it says if my sprite is hitting wall bottom then so that basically means if it's touching if the bottom of your sprite is touching uh, a wall which is the ground we've set those tiles to be walls then whatever we put in here will happen so what do we want to happen we're going to play a little bit of music so play sound and jump up so just you know add a little bit of sound effects to our game which is always good and then we're going to set the uh, velocity y to be minus 200 so into sprites get another set x to zero and put that inside the if. So sometimes you put it into the wrong place by accident like so, but you can always break it back out and put it in the place that you want it in. So we're gonna change this to velocity y and we're gonna change it to be minus 200. So that will, that will set the velocity y to 200, but because the acceleration y is set as 400, it'll eventually overtake this and then bring your, your uh, sprite back down. So you'll see here when I press the space bar, my sprite is jumping up in the air, but then gets pulled back down. Um, let me refresh. You'll see when I, uh, it'll only jump when the sprite is actually touching the ground. You can see the amount of times I'm pressing it there while it's in the air, but it, and it's not double jumping. And that's what the it, uh, if is my sprite hitting wall bottom does. That's, you know, checks if it's touching the ground or not. Okay, so that's step number four. Let me mark that as done and we will move on to step number five. So in here we're going to add in our obstacles. So we're going to add in our cactuses. Cacti? Is that the plural of cactuses? I'm not sure. Let's go with cactuses. So we're going to add in our cactuses into our game. So what we need to do is we're going to click on the box in the set tile map too. So where we kind of designed our tile map, the big long one, and we're going to add a new tile in and paint a cactus. And then we're going to place that cactus at different points along our map. So we're going to go in, we're going to go into my tiles and say new tile and kind of draw a cactus. So, you know, just some sort of cactus like this. And then we're going to be able to dot those cactuses all the way through our map. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back into the set tile map to tile map, click on the little gray button. So it opens up uh, the tile map editor. I'm going to click on my tiles here. And this is where we can actually design our own tiles. So to design our, old, our own tile, I'm going to click on the plus and that will open up the tile map editor. So here's where we just want to draw a, a cactus. Or if you wanted to put in some, some different type of obstacle, you decide what type of obstacle you want. I'm going to go with cactus. So I'm going to choose a brown color here and I'm just going to basically do a cactus like this just with kind of two branches coming out of it. And let's get the fill tool. 
paint bucket tool to fill it in. And click on done. So now I have my, my cactus tile and it's selected. I can then put my cactus at different places through my map. So basically you want to leave a little bit of space at the start, um, you know, so your cart, you know, so the game starts and you kind of get ready. Um, and then you want your first cactus to come in. So maybe I might start about here and then just start adding them in. And what you want to do is kind of make it a little bit tricky. So sometimes you might put in, you know, a double one. Sometimes you might put in some tight ones like this. So it might be a little bit of trial and error, basically, to kind of create a map. That's challenging, but doable. Let's get rid of my head. Something like that. And uh, once, you, you, once you're happy with how it looks, I remember we'll do a couple of trial runs just to test that it works. So let's click on done here. So our game should reload with our new tile maps and I should actually be able to play it now. Oh, so. Uh, let's refresh that. Did you see what happened there? I put in the first one too, too close to the start, so I'm automatically kind of falling into it. So I'm going to get, need to get rid of that one. So let's go in and get the eraser tool, and I'll get rid of the first one. Uh, this should refresh. Oh, there we go. That's better. So, oh, so I've actually made a tricky enough map but maybe it is doable. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> that's tough. I might need to go back in and, and remove some of those. Um, so let me see. I'm going to make it a little bit easier on myself. So get rid of a couple. Something like that. Just make it a little bit easier because I, I I don't want to make it too hard at the start because I do want to be able to do it because we'll need to program the kind of goal tile at the end. So I just need to make sure that I can actually do this map. And then I might, you know, you can always go back in and make it more challenging or even do a level two. Okay, brilliant. So I can make it to the goal tile. All right. So once you've created your cactus tile, you've put that into your map, you've done a couple of test runs just to make sure, yes, I can do this map and get to the end. Once you've got that done, come back and mark step number five as done. Get your reward and then move on to step number six. So here's where we're going to detect if you hit a cactus. So to do that, we're just going to add in this big block here, which says on Sprite of Kind Player overlaps with and will select your cactus tile or whatever tile you have for your obstacle at location. And inside that, then we'll put game over, lose, and we'll do a different, uh, you can choose what type of effect. Um, so let's add this code in. So into our code editor, and get a little bit of space because this code will be going in on its own. It doesn't connect to anything. We're going to go to the scene toolbox and there should be an, uh, there should be in the tile map section we have on sprite of kind player overlaps with and you can see we can actually choose a tile type. So we'll choose our obstacle tile in there and then it says at location. So I'm going to drag that in. So make sure you get the right block there. So it says on sprite of kind player overlaps and you can choose your tile type. So I'm going to choose my cactus at location. So when anytime my sprite uh, player overlaps with a, one of these cactus tiles, whatever we put inside this block, block will run. So what do we want to put in here? We're just going to put in game over. So go into our game toolbox, get a game over lose block and put it inside here and click on the plus so we can choose what effect. So I'm going to go with the slash effect. So something negative as opposed to like confetti or hearts or smiles because, you know, something bad has happened. So we can see there it actually did work. Let's try that again. Refresh. So I'll jump over the first one, but go into the second one and, and you see it runs the game over with the slash effect on it. So you can kind of play around with whatever effect you want uh, for that. But once you have it done, come back and mark step number six as done. Get your reward. 
and we'll move on to step number seven. So for the score, and this is the same in the classic game, the longer you stay on it, you stay within the uh, game, you know, without hitting any of the obstacles, the more points you get. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the score to be zero. So inside the on start, we're gonna put in set score to zero. So when the game starts, your score is zero. Then we're gonna use a block that says on game update every 100 MS. MS stands for milliseconds. So there's 1,000 milliseconds in a second. So 100 MS is one tenth of a second. So this, this will run 10 times every second. And what are we gonna put in, inside there? We're gonna change the score by one. So as you go along, you will see that your score up the top right will be going higher and higher the longer you stay in the game. Okay, so let's add these blocks in. So we're gonna go into the info toolbox and get a set score to zero. So let me just drag that in and show you where I'm putting it. I'm gonna put that inside the on start. So again, the on start is where we set up our game. So now when our game runs at the start, you'll see that it has the zero up the top right. And then what we wanna do is kind of drag into a little bit of space and move this up. And we'll go into the game toolbox and the second one there says on game update every 500 ms let's bring that in and change it to be 100 ms so every tenth of a second this is going to run and we're just going to give ourselves a point so change score by one so when the game refreshes here you'll see my score up the top right is going up so the longer i stay in the game my score goes up and I'll die on purpose there and it'll, it'll stop. So you see there, I got 83 on that run. Okay, let's mark that step as done. And moving on to step number eight. So step number eight, we're just gonna detect that, we, uh, that we've got to the end. So when we do actually get to the end and jump into our goal tiles or run into them, we're gonna put, in, put on the game one uh, animation. So when you win the game, um, and, that, and it'll show you your score and tell you if it's a high score or not. So again, we're just gonna use the same block on Sprite of Kind Player overlaps with, and we'll choose whatever tile you have, your, you have for your goal tile, either kind of forest tile, and then we'll put in game over win and choose our effect. So let's do this again. So you could right click and duplicate this if you wanted, and then change it to be, you know, whatever one you want, or I'll get rid of that. You can just go back in and into the scene toolbox and drag it in again, if you wanna do it that way. But make sure you choose your goal tile and you need to put a game over and click this so it, it toggles across to win and then choose your effect. I'm gonna do Starfield's effect. So let's run through this and see if we can test to see if this works. So I'm gonna, oh. I was about to say, I need a perfect run here just as I died. So, can I do it all the way to the end? I think this is where they're all doubles. So I might need to make that a little trickier. There we go. So you win and it does the little star field effect at the end and shows my score, which is 122. Okay, I'm gonna mark mine as done. So that's basically the game, but now we're going to look at just kind of making it a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we want to animate our dinosaur. So we can see uh, his or hers uh, little legs kind of moving up and down, something like this. So as it's kind of moving through, just kind of adding in a little bit uh, to the game to make it look a little bit better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in an animation asset. So to do that, we're gonna click on the assets uh, uh, link here and we're going to add in a or we're going to create a copy of our of our dinosaur and create a little animation so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to click on assets up here and i what do i do so let me check so click on assets select your dino tile so select the dino tile uh, click on the copy button and then new asset so copy and then a uh, new asset and then click on animation and then press the control V keyboard or keys on your keyboard at the same time to space your dinosaur your dinosaur uh, tile oh so undo that 
So control V, so that pastes in my dyno tile. Um, click on the uh, this kind of uh, new layer button to duplicate your design into a new frame. So I'm going to click on this one. Select a new frame and use the eraser tool to erase the dino's legs. So I'm going to select this frame here and I'm going to get the eraser tool and erase the dino's legs. So that means I have two of them there, one with the legs, one without the legs. Uh, click the this button here to show the previous frame underneath. Where is that button? Well, I can just click through them like this. I can see the two of them there, or I can press play here, and you'll see it kind of going through like that. I'll press stop. If you wanted, you could, you know, um, you can instead of removing the dino's legs, you could kind of make them just even a little bit shorter. Here, let me see where that is. It's about there. So like that and up here. So now when I press play between the two of them, <laughs> we can see it running like that. You can even do one up, one down, one up, one down if you want to make it kind of uh, a little bit better. But once you've got it done, which you're, once you're kind of happy with your animation, you just click on the done button down the bottom here. Click on done. And then we need to program the animation. So I'm going to mark done on step number nine. Oh, Xbox. And then to uh, animate your sprite, we're just going to go in to the advanced toolbox and animation. And we're going to bring in this animate sprite uh, block and choose our sprite. So I'll show you how to do this now. So I'm going to go back to blocks here. Click on advanced. Click on animation. Actually, I'm going to scroll this over so I'm near the on start. Go back. So advanced animation. And we're going to animate, animate my sprite. We're going to get this block here and put it inside the on start. And click on the gray box here so we can uh, choose what animation asset we want to use. So I go into my assets and see when I mouse over this uh, one here, it kind of runs through the animation. So I know that's the right one. I'm going to click on that and then click on done. And it puts it in there so it says how fast the interval is between you know the the frame so we'll we'll try 200 ms for the moment but i need to click on the loop so this loops it on and off so click this on and when this refreshes you can actually see there here i'll make sure i can jump through this you'll see my animation is actually going let's zoom in actually Go full screen so we'll see it a little bit better. So you can see my little dinosaur's legs jumping up and down there. Uh, if I wanted, I could change this maybe to 100 ms so it goes a little bit faster. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better that's going faster. Um, if you wanted, you could animate the tail, you could animate the arms as well. You know, uh, you could even add in a third frame. It doesn't just need to be two frames. So you can actually get a little bit more detailed. But the important thing here is we're learning for the first time how to actually animate a sprite, which is a really cool skill to know how to do in Arcade. So I'm going to mark that as done. Step number uh, 10. And then step number 11 is just playing the game. So go in and play the game. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you know, change around your map a little bit where your cactuses are or whatever your obstacles are. If you want to animate uh, a little bit, you can even put in health or boosts or, you know, something like that. With that if you, you know, you bump into something, you get an extra points or something like that. So ha have a think, you know, about what idea you would like to do in the game. So once you've got the project done and you've kind of, you know, animated your sprite and done the map exactly the way you want it, how would you like to improve the game? Put something into the game, give it a go. Don't worry if you break it. It's all about losing, or losing, it's all about learning uh, how to do different things. And often you, you don't learn unless you go in and start messing around and breaking things and then fixing them. So it's always a good way of learning. So I hope you all enjoyed that lesson. Uh, hopefully again, we'll be back next week to our live classes. Hopefully no more recorded classes. It's just unfortunately the way it's gone these last couple of weeks. But 
again, I hope everyone's enjoying the, the lessons and learning more and more. And by the time we do do the build battles in uh, Arcade, everyone should be really skilled up uh, really well and we, we should be able to produce and code some really nice things. So that's it for this week and we will see you next week. Bye.